Today, I've got my 5-speed 4.0 96 Grand Cherokee and Lyft. Now this thing is running and driving perfectly. I couldn't be happier with it. So today, I'm going to change it. Uh, because I went on eBay and found myself a cheap locker. And, you know, lockers are better. Right here we have the open differential. First step, taking out this bolt so we can get the cross pin out and pull out all the stuff. You're supposed to be able to slide the axle shafts in and you have to take off those C-clips, uh, but I can't. So what I'm gonna do, I think it might be the brake rotor. It might be because it's a disc brake Jeep instead of a drum brake. Uh, I'm gonna pop off the rotor and see if that lets me move it in a little further because I can't get those clips off right now. Looks like the rotor was the problem. C-clip fell right out as soon as I got the rotor off. So, if you have a disc brake keep, uh, plan on taking the rotors off in order to slide it in a little further. Now you're supposed to be able to install this without removing the uh, axle shaft on the ring gear side. So I was hoping I didn't have to uh, take off the wheel and uh, everything else. But as I mentioned before, with the disc brakes, it wouldn't slide in enough to take off the C-clip. Also, with a caliper on, it won't slide out far enough to uh, get the, the spider gear off. So, uh, we're taking apart this side too. Oh well. Well, I'm test fitting the parts because there's a spec for how much room there should be between the, the um, pinion shaft and the axles. And uh, in the manual it says to make it between 5 and 20 thou. Um, even with used differential, used locker, all that, I'm getting uh, 15 on one side and 18 on the other. So both are under 20. They're fairly close together, so we're going to go ahead and keep going. I think we'll be okay. I'm doing a final systems check on that used locker. Uh, everything went together pretty smoothly. Uh, instructions weren't bad. A few places they switched uh, or used interchangeably ring gear side and left side. So um, I just went with both for the same side. And um, it was easier to read all the instructions and then sort of picture it in my head and then ignore the instructions and just put it together. But maybe that's just me. Anyway, everything looks like it whole is together and bolted together properly. The gap between the two sides is um, just where it should be. It should be 145 to 170 thousandths. I'm at about 150. So even with all these used parts, uh, we're right in spec. Now, one thing is the manual says that you should be able to turn the tire and see it lock and unlock. Um, I don't have the tires on it because I had to remove the calipers in order to slide the axles in and out. But um, I tried turning the rotors and uh, it didn't unlock at all. So I don't know if that's wear on the unit. Um, everything looks to be installed properly. Could just be I don't have a tire on there to give me more leverage. So I'm just going to button it up and assume it's going to work fine because, you know, what could go wrong? Went ahead and put the brakes and the wheels on just to uh, check this again before I put the cover on. Now everything looks fine. It works just like it should. So I guess the problem was is you need the leverage of the tires to turn it. Everything works smooth now. First test drive with the new locker in place. Okay. Well, first impressions of driving it. You can feel the locker every once in a while on corners and takeoffs, especially if you're taking off around the corner. You can sort of feel one tire try to slip a little more than it ever used to. I'm not sure if it's because of the way the ratcheting action is or if it's just driving the rear inside tire more. Um, but it definitely, uh, you can feel the difference between this and the normal open differential. Um, quite honestly, on the road, the open differential is better. But this isn't too bad, so it really matters is off-road. That's where I am now. Now I'm going to go up a hill that has some big cross holes so I can get both tires uh, diagonally opposite off the ground and make that locker really work. So uh, let's do that. Okay, I found a spot where this rear tire has absolutely no weight on it. Front end's in a hole. This one, as you can see, no weight at all. Uh, that's fully extended. If this was an open differential, that would spin. I wouldn't go anywhere. 
right now the only thing driving me is that other rear tire because the front end is still open and that one's in a hole so that would spin too. So we're going to go ahead and take off and see how that locker works. Uh, that worked out beautiful. Drives good. You can see the hill I have here. Lump on that side, hole on this side. Holes for tires on each opposite side. Uh, so this is a good test for a locker. And it did well, so I'm happy about that. I used to have to pick my line on that hill. However, now I can take the worst line possible and drive right up it. So that locker is definitely a win. Uh, now I need harder trails. Hmm. <laughs> I've heard that lockers can cause some extra mechanical slop in your drive line. Uh, with an automatic, you don't notice it because it's all already absorbed into the torque converter, putting a little pull on it. Uh, with a standard, you do feel more drivetrain movement. Uh, it's really not particularly noticeable. Um, it's really not much more than an open differential. Every once in a while on a corner, you can feel the um, locker a little bit, but really uh, mostly you notice a little bit of ratcheting action or the inside tire spinning a little, uh, which is going to happen with a standard or an automatic. So I don't think that having a standard really adversely affects it at all. I still advocate the standard is the best way to go on these Jeeps. Uh, it's fantastically fun to drive. 